Apple Warren. What's in it? I'll get it off for you, Mr. Brand. Ah! <laughs> Say, you came here to learn about emotions, not play children's games. What is this anyway, Mr. Brent? Well, you had some questions about emotions for your biology classwork. This will help. Sit down. Notice your own emotional reactions to what you've just experienced. What did you feel? What did you do? How about you, Jean? Oh, I've got to catch my breath, Mr. Brent. That scared me. Warren, your reaction? Well, I think I feel kind of angry. You tricked us, you know. And you, Larry. Where did you get this thing? This is pretty clever. Notice that each of you reacted differently. Jean's reaction you might call one of fear. I'll say. Jean drew away from the box. That's what you generally do when you're afraid of something. On the other hand, Warren's reaction you might call rage. He was ready for a fight. What happened to me? What did I do? You laughed. You were pleased. You drew closer to the box. You liked it. Psychologically, we classify that sort of response with what we call the basic emotion of love. And so we have examples of each of the three basic emotions. Fear, rage, and love. Why did we act that way? I didn't want to be afraid. Our emotional reactions are involuntary. Pretty much automatic. Well, if that's the case, then why weren't all our reactions the same? Well, Jean, when we're born, emotional reactions are pretty much the same in everyone. But as we grow older, each of us develops his own individual set of response patterns. Why is that, Mr. Brent? Conditioning. What's conditioning? Come over here. Did you ever see a mouse that acted as if you were afraid of cheese? <laughs> afraid of cheese? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? But watch this. The strangest thing I've ever seen. Is that the result of conditioning, Mr. Brent? How did you do that? Well, we began several months ago with just a mouse, one that liked cheese. When it was confronted with a piece of cheese, it responded by going toward it. But when the mouse was given a mild electric shock as it approached the cheese, it responded by running back. After this procedure was repeated for some time, the mouse began to associate the cheese with the electric shock. And because he was afraid of the shock, the mouse was conditioned to be afraid of cheese. Now, he responds to cheese as he would ordinarily respond to an electric shock. That's what we call conditioning. We hitch up a stimulus, the cheese, with a new response. Must be pretty hard on the mouse. But it doesn't happen to people that way, does it? Let's find out. Come over here, Warren. Hold your hand out like this. That's right, now just try to hold it steady. Don't let your hand move, just hold it steady. But you're pushing it down. Just hold it steady. 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 Hey, it went up. That's a case of simple conditioning, not involving emotions this time, but still conditioning. Is that the reason that Jean scares so easily? Or oh, she's afraid of mice? Oh, and... hush. Very possibly, conditioning is the reason. While we're very young, the actions and attitudes of our parents and brothers and sisters condition us to a great many emotional responses. We all have them. Of course, most of our conditioning is much more complex than the sort we've shown so far. We often become conditioned to react emotionally to words or ideas. Words? Huh, I can't believe that. You can't? Well, remember, emotional behavior is largely involuntary. Here, come over here and take a look at this model of the brain. 
This is the front of it. Emotions are centered in the lower part of the brain, the thalamus. The thalamus is not consciously controlled. When your emotions are stimulated, a reaction indirectly affecting the thalamus can produce changes in you and your body. For example, you all three reacted to the jack-in-the-box. Your facial expressions and actions changed. And that was without any conscious effort or control, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Well, in the same way, your reactions can produce involuntary changes within your body. For example, these glands may produce tears. That's common in emotional responses. Other glands, such as the adrenals and the liver, work harder. Sweat glands in your skin produce perspiration. Your stomach slows down its digestive action. Your heartbeat changes, sometimes faster or sometimes slower. And your breathing changes. These and many other changes are part of emotional responses. And we can detect some of these changes to measure emotional responses. Measure them? Yes. This device called a polygraph measures variations in breathing and heartbeat, and so indicates emotional responses. Larry, you didn't think you would react emotionally to words. Do you want to try it? Sure. Isn't this something like a lie detector? It's been called that, but actually it measures and records all kinds of emotional responses. This part is the pneumograph, or bellows, which measures your respiration or breathing. Now, if you'll roll up your sleeve, Larry, we'll put this armband on your arm, and this will record your pulse or heartbeat. You've probably seen one of these in a doctor's office, haven't you, Larry? Yes, sir. Now, if Larry makes an emotional response to anything I mention, you'll notice a change on this record. Oh, this won't hurt Larry, will it? No, indeed. Just relax, Larry. This won't hurt a bit. Yes, this won't hurt a bit. You sound just like my dentist. I'll turn it on. Notice how regular Larry's breathing is now and his pulse as the pens gradually fill in the graph. Mm-hmm. Larry responds to the word fill. That's interesting. And Larry has a dentist on his mind. This is just a hunch, but perhaps if we probe deeply... There's another word. Probe. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I can guess several words that will arouse an emotional response in Larry. Toothache. Yes, that's another. Drill. And I'm responding just to words. Why? Well, perhaps you can give us the answer to that one, Larry. Oh, I have been seeing the dentist lately. I had a bad tooth. Aha! You're afraid of something, too. Words, aren't you? I guess so. How did that happen? Well, come on over here to the blackboard. Maybe if I draw a diagram of the process of conditioning, it will help you. S1, the first stimulus, stands for the dentist. He's a good fellow. Larry's normal reaction to him, R1, is curiosity and interest. But the dentist had to drill. That's stimulus two. And in this case, that caused pain. Response number two. The normal response to pain is a desire to get away, a type of fear response. Each time Larry went to the dentist, it was something like the mouse and the cheese. The dentist's stimulus became associated with the response of pain and fear. 
until Larry is conditioned to react to even words about the dentist with a pain fear response. This conditioning may wear off after a while, or it may not. Emotional disturbances may ruin your appetite, make you nervous, even upset your stomach. Why, it's like running away from cheese. I can see where conditioning can be pretty unhealthy. That's true, Jean, but don't forget that conditioning can also be very useful. It's a good idea to be conditioned to stop whenever you see a red traffic light. Well, then we want to get rid of unhealthy conditioning? I don't want to be a scaredy cat all my life. That's right. You want to grow into a mature, balanced person. That's a matter of conditioning, too. Condition yourselves to make more mature responses. Now, let's review a bit. We have certain basic emotions which are controlled subconsciously. They are modified and changed by a process called conditioning. Now, by understanding conditions and using them, we can more easily achieve emotional maturity. Let's remember what happened with the jack-in-the-box. Each of you made a different response, but all your responses were a little immature. Mature persons respond in a more balanced manner. That is, their responses include a little of each of the basic emotions. Enough fear for protection, a little anger or rage at being made foolish, a spark of the love response, that is, interest, curiosity, pleasure, a balance, you see. And we all want to become more mature emotionally, don't we? Oh, I yes, sure do. Al. Before we go, Mr. Brett, may I keep this graft? Yes, of course. I'm beginning to see now how important it is to understand your emotions. Thank you, Mr. Brett.